call this one the MT200. It's a breech loader. What you do is slap your projectile in the back. You lock this down with a distaco clamp. This is a shoulder launching type. Then you put your arm through here. You fire the valve with your right hand while you put your left hand up here and hold it with your left hand. It has a adjustable rear sight for elevation. I have degree increments there. It's a red dot sight on the Picatinny rail. The bolt through it. See, so anyway, various elevations. Put the red dot on whenever you want to hit with an apple or whatever your racket balls work really well out of your two. And it's got a uh, capacitor on the right side. The air compressor hookup is right there behind the person's back that's shooting. The other cool thing is through spudtech.com you can get rifled PVC pipe. See that or not? Yeah, it's rifled. As you can see, spudtech.com sells these rifled barrels in one and a half inch and two inch PVC pipe. And this is pretty much the MT200 SL, the shoulder launching air gun. I call this one the MT200T, as in tripod. Shoots a apple or whatever you want to shoot out of here. This is a smooth bore. I don't have a rifle barrel on this one. But like the other one, sh the shoulder launching one, this also has a the Stiko clamp. You load in your projectile, slam this shut, and lock it like that. And you fire it by flipping the ball valve down, which com the com capacitor, air capacitor, whatever it is, the air chamber's built in here, and then also the cross section. This pivots like this. There are T's there. It pivots inside there. There are hose clamps on there so I can take this gun off the lower section. It pivots this way for windage. You got elevation. I got a flip up thing here to whoop. that way I can set it on the ground here. Let it rest. This is a sight. It's got a screw up there. Or I should say a bolt for the front sight. Rear sight has various elevations. It also has windage. You can pivot to the, to the right, to the left. And for storage, that flips down. It's actually a, a hinge you put on a cupboard that keeps the cupboard door shut on those spring-loaded hinges. And it's, oh, it's also got a spotlight on here. It's a tactical flashlight. Turn that on. Turn it off. These guards are just hardboard. Gave it a camel paint scheme. I like camel. And uh, yeah, that is the MT200T. Shoots apples, racket balls, whatever you want to blast out of it. This is an M2 half scale machine gun toy I made for little boys to have fun with. The machine gun belt is made out of Mosnagon empty brass. There's wooden pegs for the bullets. 
CPVC pipe, half inch was cut, and then put a slit through it, and then I put fishing line through all the links, then these just slid right into the links. And of course to load it, this opens up. There's a couple nails there for the bolts to sit on. Slap that down. And you go over here. I got a charger handle on a can't see this one-handed. Pull it back. Let it go. That charges it. And there's a doorbell button back here that's wired to a cassette player into the battery compartment. So when you hit the doorbell button, it makes noise. Anyway, that is my half scale M2 toy for little boys to have fun with. We have a lot of fun playing army with this thing. This is my air gun. This one here has a capacitor, one and a half or a one inch pipe with a tire inflator on it. Trigger valve, ball valve. Fire this one. You just put your three fingers under here, this on the trigger, and you just flick the trigger to fire it. It's not very a not a very powerful gun, but you can shoot darts out of it pretty well. It's got a nice scope on it. This one also has the uh, reinforcement of the shelving bracket. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is the rammer, the muzzle loader. On this end, I've got a screw eyes so I can swab it out with a little cloth to put silicone lubricant. It's a nine millimeter brass casing on a uh, three eighths inch dowel. It goes in there like that. There's a magnet down here to hold the rammer in. That eyelet or that screw eye gets stuck on that magnet and that keeps the rammer from falling out. Again, it has an adjustable bipod. The bipods have sections that can be taken out to raise and lower it for different elevations. Um, yeah, this is really a nice little one. Fun to shoot. Runs off an air compressor with a tire inflator attachment on it. I call this one my air crossbow. What you do is you take a carbon arrow with a 6cc syringe stopper on it, a rubber stopper on the back where the knock is. You ram it in and then you uh, close this after it's rammed in and then the air pressure will stay in. I did have this as a backup valve but it's not necessary. I won't put one of those in again. You ram the arrow in then you close this, and then that way the arrow won't blow out again because of the back pressure. I got a valve there, or I should say a coupler there. Hook it up to an air compressor. I also have a tire valve here, which I use most often to pressurize the capacitor. Again, it has a shelf rail to reinforce the barrel, keep it straight. This one has a flashlight, a red dot sight, and a laser sight on it. So I can go to the archery range or my own personal range actually and shoot arrows out of this thing. It's a neat little compact gun. It's, the nice thing is the arrow goes right up against your shoulder. So uh, it's very compact and yet quite powerful and quite accurate. Anyway, that's my air crossbow. This is my little tiny Civil War Home dart gun, it'll shoot Nerf darts <laughs> pretty far. I've shot them as far as the uh, exit door over there, it's over 40, about 40 feet away. You got a little limber here to store your ammo in. 
What happens is you unhook the cannon there from the limber, and then you, I'll hook, I'll hook it up here, show you. And then what you do is you put a uh, air hose with a pump thing I, I built. You just whack down on the pump handle that forces air in there and blows out the Nerf dart, foam dart, whatever. Anyway, that's my little toy artillery piece. Works fairly well. This is a mortar I made. It shoots four inch foam balls, Nerf balls, poof balls, whatever, dipped in the water. They'll go roughly well, 80 yards or so. This one's kind of cool. It has an elevation adjustment. You turn this to whatever elevation you want, and then you adjust the level by this here. To, that's how you adjust the elevation. Turn that tight. The whole thing pivots on hinges down there. So when you're carrying it, you just put it down. And then when you're ready to start shooting it, excuse me, you gotta go like that to whatever elevation you want. And spall valve, here's where you connect the air compressor. Yeah, that's about it for this one. That is my air mortar. I call this one my comp compressed air gun rifle. It has a CPBC pipe for a barrel. And then on the top of the barrel, it has a shelf rack. You buy to mount shelves on. It has an adjustable rear sight. It's just a corner bracket, I believe it's called. And you, you turn it right and left for windage. It has two different elevations. And even an, actually three, there's a notch in the top. At the front, there's a CPVC pipe with a screw through it for the front sight. There's actually an arrow inside of it, aluminum shaft, so I can shoot darts out of it. There's the breech. What you do is you put a dart in there. And then when you hold it, you push down on the flap and hold it tight while you're holding it with this hand. And then with the left hand, you hit the air gun, which pushes air into the chamber, pushes the projectile out the barrel. And here's where you connect it to an air compressor. You can shoot darts out of here pretty well. It's got a bipod, of course. This one here is my laser pointer rifle. There's a laser pointer inside here, inside the forearm, that you'd use for slide shows to point around the room for slide presentations. This laser pointer shines out through here the barrel is just ornamental. It doesn't serve any purpose. It's completely empty. But anyway, you hit the doorbell button to turn on the laser pointer and it'll shoot a light out. I have a low light scope on top. Out in uh, Nebraska, I put up some reflective tape about a half mile away, six by six inch piece. And if you got a steady enough hand, I'm good trigger control, you can actually hit it from a half a mile, and I'm betting I could go out to at least three quarters of a mile and light up tape with this rifle. It's a very quiet, inexpensive, fun way to target shoot, because it doesn't shoot anything but a laser, but it does help you with trigger control and breathing and stuff like that. Anyway, that's the LPR-1 laser pointer rifle. This one is what I call the MT-50 air gun, MT-50A. This one is my favorite one of all my rifles. It comes apart. It has interchangeable barrels. You can put different barrel sizes to shoot different barrel protect, different projectiles. 
It has different sighting systems. You can use a short barrel if you'd rather use it as a shotgun. I got a, an air shotgun. You can put a short barrel on there. You can also change the sight if you want a red dot sight to put on the air shotgun. It shoots uh, steel BBs. It's got a magnet to hold the BBs in place after you dump the BBs in. You have to have a wad, of course, like a potato or a shotgun wad. 12 gauge shotgun wad will, I think, fit inside a three quarter inch PVC pipe, if I remember right. This has, well, let me set it up for you. I'll show you what this thing looks like fully assembled. This is what it looks like fully as assembled. This is set up to be a sniper rifle. It has got the longer barrel and the big scope on it. Like I said, it can be set up as an air shotgun as well. This rifle has all kinds of features on it. Interchangeable barrels, whatever size and length you want. This is kind of neat. You can adjust the elevation of the scope. To different distances. There's a slot in there to allow it to do that. To fire this rifle, you put your three fingers under here, your trigger finger on the gas valve, and then you just flick it like that to release the pressure. The pressure is stored inside the air capacitor, which runs along the right side, and it's charged through either the air coupler on the bottom or the tire valve on top, whichever you prefer. It has a cheek rest, which is two by four, basically. It has an adjustable bipod. Once again, it can be raised and lowered for these interchangeable pieces. Yeah. Like I said, I think this is my favorite one. That is the MT-50A air gun. Well, I'm going to give a talk here pretty soon about honoring our military and police veterans from the pulpit up here. Hopefully this all goes well. This is the MT-300, I call it, as a air coupler insert. The way this one works is you've got a lanyard here and then what happens is you got the ball valve closed mm -hmm. and then there's nothing in you right now but you give a pull on the lanyard a quick yank and that's what opens the ball valve snaps it open and releases all the air that's in the capacitor into the barrel and shoots out the <laughs> this will shoot the uh, projectile out. <laughs> it's a breech loader. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's got that kind of range, but... Okay, I had some spray lubricant, but maybe it'll be okay. This is my loading tool. Okay, I'm going to pull the lanyard here. We'll see what happens. Give it a really fast snap. Hard as you can. Oh, oh, yeah. You should slide it down the middle of the barrel before you put the orange in. Nice and tight. <laughs> is that about? You can get it over. What? Right Let's take a shot and then adjust it, right? Oh, okay. See which way the orange goes. Okay, give it a really good fast snap. You may fire when ready. Oh! Here we go, Dave. Oh, ball. <laughs> right behind you. This means that I'm completely. 
give it a little slack and then just pull it fast. Yeah, you want to snap that valve as fast as you can. Wait for the compressor to push. Actually, I think the compressor's, we're good. The compressor's at 160. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go! Yep, anytime you're ready. Oh, it hooked down to the left again. Yeah. Okay. Is it aimed properly? Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you, uh, does it look aimed properly? I don't know. It seems to curve to the left, so you might want to go. Yeah, you might want to aim a uh, little bit, what, a couple feet to the right or a foot? Yeah, something like that. It seems to. We're about a foot to the right. Must not be rifle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, ready? I'm gonna zoom in down there. Okay. You may find hey. Oh, you put a nice hole in it. <laughs> okay. You may fire when ready. That's a long way. Yeah. I think it pretty much went out of sight.